Hi there. In this question we're told that the coordinates of two points are a which is 4 and minus 1 and b which is 7 and t. The line L1 which is 3x minus 4y minus 12 equal to 0 is perpendicular to a b. Find the value of t. Okay so let's get the slope of the line L1 uh, and then we can turn it upside down and change the sign to get the slope of a b. So to get the slope of L1, I'm going to write it in the form y equal to mx plus c, because in that format, m is the slope. OK, so I rearrange this, so I have minus 4y is equal to minus 3x uh, plus 12, which means that uh, divide across by minus 4, so y is equal to minus 3 over minus 4, x plus 12 over minus 4, and just tidy that up. So y equal to 3 over 4x minus 3. So we have the slope now of L1. Okay, so therefore the slope of L1 is 3 over 4. Therefore the slope of AB is you turn it upside down and change the sign, so that would be minus 4 over 3. Now, we just need to find the slope of AB using the slope formula, and we can find what T is. So, minus 4 over 3, we know, using the slope formula, is going to be T minus minus 1, that's Y2 minus Y1, over x2 minus x1, which will be 7 minus 4. So that means minus 4 over 3 is equal to t plus 1 over 3. Uh, we can multiply across by 3, both sides by 3, so it gets rid of the 3's in the bottom. And then we have minus 4 is t plus 1, therefore minus 4 minus 1 is minus 5 is equal to t. There's our answer. Now find in terms of k the distance between the point P, 10k, and L1. OK, so if we use the perpendicular distance from a point to a line formula, which is in your coordinate geometry section, and uh, just to recap, your coordinate geometry section is page 18 and 19, and your perpendicular distance formula is at the top of page 19. So the formula is as follows, d for distance is ax1 plus by1 plus c all over the square root of a squared plus b squared. And we need to have l1 in that format, and it is. So we know that a is 3, b is minus 4, and c is minus 12. And then the point x1, y1 is just 10 and k. So let's just sub everything in. And we have a which is 3 times x1, which is 10, plus b is minus 4 times y1, which is k, plus c is minus 12. And then we divide that by the square root of 3 squared plus minus 4 squared. So let's simplify that, and we get 30 minus 12, minus 4k, so put the two constants to the front, all over the square root of 9 plus 16 is the square root of 25. And we can just tidy that up a little bit. 30 take away 12 is 18. So we have 18 minus 4k, the absolute value of 18 minus 4k, whatever that is. And when I say absolute value, I mean the positive value. Uh, divided by the square root of 25, which is, of course, 5. But I can just leave it in that format. It's fine. Or if you like, I can just say it's 18 minus 4k over 5. Either will do fine. Now, the next question. Okay, we're told that the point P, 10 and K, 
is on a bisector of the angles between the lines L1 and L2. And L2 is given as 5x plus 12y minus 20 equal to 0. Find the possible values of k. OK, so we have a situation where we have two lines, L1 and L2. And we have a third line, which is a bisector of those two. So let's just label this as L1. This is L2. And we'd have to demonstrate that this is a bisector. So let's call that theta here. Then this is also theta down here. So this line, the black line, is a bisector of the two angles. And it goes on and on and on. So at some point on this line, remember also that L1 and L2 actually go on and on forever as well. OK, so what we want to do, we know that PK, let's just, let's just draw PK somewhere on this. OK, we don't know which side, but it doesn't really make much difference. It's somewhere on it. And what we do know is that PK will, sorry, P, the point P, will be equidistant from both of those lines because it's on a bisector of the angles. So the perpendicular distance uh, from D, sorry, from P to the line L1, which we know is D, uh, is going to be the same as the perpendicular distance from the point P to the line L2. So what we're going to do now is do exactly what we did before and find the distance from P to the line L2 uh, in terms of K. So we'll do exactly as we did before. So we'll say D uh, this time is equal to uh, 5 times 10 uh, plus 12 times k minus 20 all over the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared and 5 squared plus 12 squared is 25 plus 144 which is root 169 which is 13 so that's on the bottom on the top we get 50, take away 20, so that's 30, uh, plus 12k. Now that's D, but we also know that D is what we described earlier on. Okay, from above we also know that D is 18 minus 4k all over root 25. So I have an equation here. If we ignore the D on the left hand side, I have this equation here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this for K. And to do that I'm going to square both sides. Because of these absolute value signs I think it's best to square both sides. So doing that on the left we get uh, 30 squared now 30 squared is 900 uh, plus twice 30 by 12 which is 720 K plus 12 squared K squared so that's 144 K squared and when we square the bottom we just get 169 when we square 18 we get 324 twice 18 by 4 is also 144 and 4 squared is 16 and then k squared is also 16 sorry it's 144k so there we have it and then we square the bottom and we just get 25 what I could do here is I could cross multiply so I'm going to multiply the left by 25 and the right by 169 OK, so multiplying 25 by the numerator on the left, uh, I get uh, 22500 0, 0 plus 1800, sorry, 18,000k 18, plus 3600k squared. And when I multiply the numerator on the right by 169, I get 54756 minus 24336k plus 2704k squared. 
I then need to bring everything to one side and I'll get a quadratic equation. So I will bring everything to the left and I get 896k squared when I subtract 2704 from 3600. And then I do the same with my k's. So I'll bring all the k's to the left and I'll get plus 42336k. And do the same with my constant. Bring everything to the left and I get 32256. And then there's nothing left on the right so I just get equal to zero. Now it possibly factorizes but it's hard to tell. So I'm going to just use the minus b formula. Okay, so that means that k, I have room over here, is equal to minus b, which is minus 4, 2, 3, 3, 6, plus or minus the square root of, I don't have too much room here, b squared, which is 4, 2, 3, 3, 6 squared, minus 4 by a, uh, which is 8, 9, 6, by uh, minus 3, 2256 all over twice a which is twice 896 mm. so I will just put all that into the calculator and get two values for k so first of all I will do the plus and I get 3 over 4 which is nice and now I'll do the minus so it's minus 4, 2, 3, 3, 6 minus the square root of all of that uh, divided by twice 8, 9, 6 and I get minus 48. So I get two values which is what we were asked for. We were asked for the possible values of k. Now uh, if k is greater than 0 find the distance from p to l1. Okay so we knew that the distance from P to L1 was 18 minus 4K over 5. So we have 18 minus 4K over 5. Well, the absolute value of that is D. I could have chosen the other uh, value for D because it's the same as the distance to L2, but this one's fine. So now the the value of k which is positive is 3 quarters, so it's 4 times 3 quarters. All over 5, so that is 18 minus 3, because these 4's cancel. And I don't need the absolute value signs because the top is positive. You don't need that if the numerator turned out to be negative inside the modulus signs, but it isn't. So uh, 15 divided by 5 is 3. So the answer is three units, whatever those units are. That's the distance from P to L1. And I think that completes that question.